back with more of it here. The Rick Jensen Show. Randy Dasher filling in for Mr. Jensen today. Joined in studio by Dave the Electrician, America's oldest teenager. If you'd like to join in on the program, 302-529-1017. 302-529-1017. Dave, I stole that America's oldest teenager line from uh, Mike Doty from Soul Coughing. Always says it about the uh, the keyboard player whenever he introduces him at concerts. Mike Doty was the singer in my favorite band, Soul Coughing, and he was like 10 years younger than the rest of the guys in the band, so he would call this other guy, <laughs> he would call the keyboard player America's oldest teenager, I guess, probably a guy who was, you know, like 35, hooking up with 18-year-old girls and stuff, so, at their concerts. Anyway, so he's American, you know, he would dye his hair, like, blonde and stuff, <laughs> you know, like, try to look younger than he was, but, Okay. Um, yeah. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dave, Dave's real into that. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> no, 18. Yeah, I said yeah, 18. Yeah, I, I didn't know, say 14. I mean, yeah. <laughs> aren't you, uh, isn't, aren't you 14 years your, uh, your wife's senior? Am I yes, wording that yes. more properly? <laughs> Can I make it sound more complicated? Senior, Tim. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Aren't you more her 14 years her senior? <laughs> no, how old were yes, you? I am. When you met your lovely wife. 35. And how old was she? 21. <laughs> Mazel tov. Yeah. All right. Look at that. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, I do know some couples who, uh, who met when they were, I know a married couple, and they're still married to this day. They've been married 20 some odd years, probably not far from 30 years being married. Kids, great marriage, you know. Um, and they met. The guy was like 22 and she was like 15. And everyone, the parents were totally fine with it. And they, you know, they dated at that point. Who knows when other things happened. But they're married to this day. They've been married for a long time. And back then, you know, 26 years ago. 20, <laughs> yeah, back well, <laughs> back then it, was, it wasn't as, as frowned upon as it is today. Right. And I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I'm just saying. It was Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> yeah. 13? When the well, that was 13? his cousin, too, to make yeah. it even weirder. <laughs> Allegedly. <So>. Allegedly. <laughs> All right, let's, I watched a movie about that. It's pretty good. Though. Yeah. Uh, who said that dude, the guy with the shirt? Yeah, that, the that guy with the thing. He does him. Yes, that guy. He's an actor. Yeah. He's good. He is good. People are yelling at their radios. Yes. <laughs> oh, you got a core. All right. Uh, and let's go to Jim in Concordville to speak about Trump. Hello, Jim. How are you? Why do I not hear Jim? Oh, here, I'm uh, sorry, Jim. You know, Mr. Trump, before he was President Trump, uh, he uh, he was really well liked. And then uh, and then he brought up those 28 pages from the missing 9-11 report. And they uh, they disliked him all of a sudden. Who did? Who disliked him? I had you down at first. I didn't hear the the very first word you said. Sorry. Uh, the, the the news media disliked him. Disliked Trump. Yeah. Really? And then they and then. Yeah. Well, I, all right. Well, I'll take your word for it, there, Jim. Uh, sounds yeah, like the... uh, you know that guy. You know that guy from uh, Soul Coffin. Yeah. Well, they really wanted to name the band Soul Man. But I told him to change it to Soul Call. <laughs> okay, wow. Because, it, because it'd be a lot funnier. No, I, I appreciate that, He Jim. almost sounds like the real person. He almost that we does. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. I, 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 I got to go. All See right. you later. See you later. <laughs> All right. There he goes. Very good, mister. <laughs> Fantastic. Who was that? Who was that masked man? <laughs> All right. That was, uh, oh, it's gone. Jim. Jim from Concord. Yeah. All right. We'll write down that Jim called. All right. Very good. Thank you, Jim. Oh, Jim's cool. Yeah, Jim is cool. <laughs> He's the coolest. <laughs> All right. Um, so, oh, so it was right right before uh, Jim called. What 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 were what topic were we on there? Uh, soul coughing. Oh, really? No, it wasn't know. that. It was something else. <laughs> I was going somewhere with something. Uh, young. Oh, the Dennis oh, Quaid. Yeah, yeah, Dennis yeah. Quaid. Yeah, yeah. Dennis, Dennis Quaid? Quaid was the guy in the uh, the the thing with his his thirteen year old cousin. And it wasn't her. his brother who was the big galook. Yes, yeah, Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. <laughs> he was the one that was in uh, uh, National Lampoon Vacation. He was in pretty some, some pretty good movies. I yeah, think. yeah. He's I believe he's broke now, and that's that's he sad. Really? Yeah, no, that's what I heard a while broke. back. Maybe he's maybe Dennis Quaid. Give him some money. I'm sure yeah. he has plenty. Yeah, he has probably Dennis Quaid money. All right. 
Um, oh, so I know people. In fact, I know two couples who have met when they were um, the the girl. I'm going to say girl because the girl was like 15 and the guy was 21 or 22. And I know two couples to this day are still together. Now, the, the one couple was together for a while, split up. Now they're back together again. Guilty. Guilty? Now, you were in a situation like that? 17, 13. 17, 13? Yeah, and I wasn't the 13. <laughs> <laughs> so on your 18th birthday, what happened? Uh, <laughs> we broke up. Oh, really? <laughs> no. No, you didn't. No, he married her. Oh, uh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, mazel tov. <laughs> you. you did the right thing, Dave. So it wasn't that unheard of, um, and, and I'm not. And look, I'm not making light of pedophilia or anything like that, or statutory rape or anything. I'm just saying, in different in times back in the day, things like that. If the, if a woman, eh, sometimes there are young ladies that are way more mature than young fellows at the time. I'll tell you something. Um, the the uh, statute of limitations is long over. Uh, when I was 17. Um, I guess the girl I was dating cheated on me because I wouldn't have broken up with her if she was kind enough to sleep with me. So she must have cheated on me and I wasn't having that. Or she broke up with me, one or the other. And probably if she broke up with me, it's because she was cheating on me. <laughs> so um, so here I am, 17, suddenly single. And I, uh, I, my friend Ernie is dating this really nice girl, Amy. And I say, Amy, don't you have any friends that you can hook me up with? I don't know anybody. I don't know. Hemming and hauling. I'm like, come on. Don't you know somebody? Finally, she goes, okay. I know this one girl, but she kind of gets around. I'm like, perfect. So <laughs> so I, I, she calls the girl up. And the girl's like, yeah. I'll, I'll. She's never seen me. Back then, there weren't pictures. You didn't email a picture over. So I ask, you know, what's she look like? She's, we like the get around girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh so I ask what she looks like, and 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 my friend Amy goes, uh, "Yeah, she's really pretty." And you know that can go that can go one way or the other, you know. <laughs> oh, she it's she's a really nice personality. Yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, make a, a short story long. Um, I go over immediately after like just one phone call, like, "Hey, you want to date this guy?" Sure. I drive over. I pick her up. The girl's stunning. I mean, she's beautiful, way out of my league. You know, if if back then a Randy seventeen, let's say I was a six, she was a nine and a half, gorgeous. So I'm like, wow, great. So and then I have to go, oh, h- how old are you? And she says, I'm fifteen years old. Now, had the next sentence out of her mouth been, I'm nineteen years old, I wouldn't have flinched. I wouldn't have said anything. I would have went, oh, you cool with dating a guy two years younger than you? If she said she was nineteen. She could have said she was 39. No, not 39. But she could have said she was 19, yes, and I would have believed her. You would have believed her. Every man on the planet would have believed if she said she was 19. So we're dating now. You know, I'm considering that I, I, I'm monogamous with her. Who knows what she's doing with me? But in, all, in, in my mind, I believe she's being monogamous with me. We're, we're boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, I'm 17. She's 15. She's stunning. I'm mediocre. <laughs> I'm probably a five, and she's a nine and a half. So, uh, so on my 18th birthday, I wake up to the sound of her mother screaming at the top of her voice. I'm going to change her name to protect the innocent. Now she still probably has family around here, so uh, so I'm changing the name. So I wake up to Julie. You're only 14 years old, <laughs> and I go. I look at her. I'm in her bed. Waking up in the morning to the screech of her mother screaming that she's only 14 years old. Now, meanwhile, the, the, her parents were divorced and the mom was never home. It was a party atmosphere at her house. She had an old brother who was my age. It was just a party house. I mean, anything goes. It was They just partied all day. The mom was never there. And um, so, you know, for me to sleep over there was not unusual. It just so happened to be my 18th birthday. And I wake up and suddenly... We grew two years apart on my 18th birthday. I'm 18. She's 14. But still, trust me, I was nowhere near the oldest guy that she had been with. But eventually, you know, somebody said, you know, she's uh, hooking up with this other dude. And I confronted her and then I I wrapped that up. So she lost a year. She lost a year when I gained a year. (laughs) 
But trust me when I tell you, if she said she was 19, you would have believed her. Everyone, every man on the planet would have believed her. you were four years apart. You said two years apart. We went from two years apart to four years apart. You doubled it. In a a blink. (laughs) In the flash. So what happened? Um, well, we kept going out and then I guess eventually like somebody, one of her dopey friends said, you know, she was hooking up with this other dude. And then I, I wasn't having that. Now, in hindsight, knowing now, you had I known you had it. back then I would have just said, I should have just let it roll this roll off my back like right. a duck. I should have just said, well, good. If I get an opportunity to hook up, I won't feel bad. And I'll just keep hooking up with her, even though she's with other guys. See how clean I'm saying this. All right. So, um, anyway, that's what happened. And uh, so then we broke up. But um, I used to play in bars. I I was a drummer. I was playing in bars when I was 15 years old, playing drums in bars. She would come to the gigs with me. Uh, I I guess I didn't didn't start dating her until I was 17. So I'm playing in bars at 17. She's 14, although she's telling me she's 15. She would be in the bars getting served. That's how old she looked. You know, And, and that's why I think there's something in the food. Like when they put hormones in chicken to make them grow faster and steroids and and all kinds of stuff like that. I think that makes young ladies develop faster prematurely because of um, maybe stuff in the food. Which is some do. Yeah, Yeah. but I I think it could be due to... No, maybe, yeah. I'm not the first guy to say this. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. That's why I think that that there have been so many mass shootings... Because I pointed this out before one other time when we were on filling in for Rick Jensen, that that there weren't mass shootings in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. There was like one in the 60s. It was from that. It was from that University tower. Of Texas. Yeah. yeah, it was from that book suppository building. It was far. <laughs> Remember? Remember that from uh, Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. <laughs> Just shows you what one motivated Marine can do. Where was he? And the guy goes, he was in the book suppository building. <laughs> Everyone laughs at him. And rightfully so that they laughed at him. <laughs> it was a book depository building. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's that with the thing with the thing. And uh, so that's a little insight into my wacky life. If you'd like to join in on the program, 302-529-1017. That's 529-1017. Earlier, I was getting into a, um, I was going to talk about John McCain. You know what? And I'll, I don't want to get bumped into the break doing it. So I'm going to take the break uh, a hair earlier here. And uh, when I get back, I will do my, uh, I will talk about John McCain. I'm not going to even remotely call it a eulogy. I'm just going to say why I used to think he was fantastic and then why my opinion changed at one point. And it's due to the Internet because when you get all your news from cable news you need to get it from other places as well it's just a wise thing to do you need to have a name balance. the region's best talk show by the associated press the rick jensen show will continue in just a moment hey listen to wdel to win some great prizes this week including tickets to see share at the wells fargo center on april 20th boy that's a long way away uh tickets to the local brews local grooves festival at the queen on september 29th uh, that's during Susan Monday and Rick Jensen show. And uh, Blue Hen football tickets during Delaware's Afternoon News with Alan Ludell. Keep it right here, and maybe you'll be our next local winner on 1017, 1150 AM, WDEL. All right, back with more fun here. 1017 FM and 1150 AM, WDEL. Rick Jensen Show. Randy Dasher filling in for Mr. Jensen today. Joined here in studio by Dave the Electrician. We will take your calls. 302-529-1017. 302-529-1017. Gets you right on the air like you just don't care. All right. Throw your hands in the air. Throw your wallets over there. More fun than the barrel junkies. All right. Uh, I did mention I was going to talk about McCain, but you know what? Something else. It's on the burner. We got that coming up. We got uh, talking about McCain. Uh, um, there's a thing about straight ticket voting. New story that I want to get to, too. There's the, there's the plaid shirt guy audio that I want to play. There was a plaid shirt guy standing behind Trump, and he wasn't clapping enough for Trump. So they, they won in and they said, uh, I'm replacing you. 
Didn't they say he was making facial expressions? He made like a, a look like, huh? Everyone else is cheering, and wow, it, it, like really? the, he he wasn't a huge Trump fan, oh. so he just made. I guess he's somewhat of a rabble rouser, but you, you know you gotta have a little thicker skin. You gotta really? be able to put up, you know. I find it a little. Yeah, so they removed him. Yeah, and you know it's always plants when they they make it look so diverse. Yeah. You know they oh oh, oh do you want to stand by Mr. Trump? Uh, I wonder why you picked me, huh? The black guy. You know I mean it, like Trump wants to have that diverse, and I'm not saying there aren't uh, there's millions I'm sure of black Trump uh, supporters, but it just seems a little planned. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, there's twelve. <laughs> you got it out of me. There's twelve. Black Trump supporters. I'm kidding, of course. It's parody. It's satire. It's funny. Funny how? How are you funny? No, no, no. You <laughs> said, how am I funny? I'm a clown. I'm being emotional. No, no, no. He said. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. <laughs> how am I funny? The way I talk? All right. So, um, oh, did you hear Britney Spears got booed on, uh, on stage the other, uh, last week, late last week. She was doing a, a concert in England. And uh, she said, uh, she's, she's like, hello, Birmingham. And it was another town. <laughs> it wasn't Birmingham. <laughs> and it was like 100 miles away, the other town. So people start booing her. It would, be, it would be the equivalent of going, you're in Pittsburgh. And you go, hello, Philadelphia. Yeah, isn't that her second guffaw, though? There's oh, a famous yeah. guy, and she, she didn't know his name. So oh, really? Hey, you. Hey. Oh. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing, you old you? Everybody, it's him. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I've had neighbors that way that, that, like, I knew them so long and then I forgot their name. (laughs) Like, they said their name once, but then I I didn't remember it. And I'm terrible with names, so I I should write it down when somebody says it. So then I said hello to them like 8,000 times. And then later, like, someone else was standing there and, and typically you go, hey, Bob, this is Tim. But I couldn't remember his name, so I'm like, uh, humming, humming. Fortunately, they moved since then, so now I don't. <laughs> I dodged that bullet. Are you lucky to meet this guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really bad with names. Really, really bad. Oh, so Britney Spears got booed because she said that the name of the wrong town. Here it is. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I can't hear the other name of the other town. Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they, they, they said in her ear, try it again. Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. What did she say? Is life cool? I got to stop it and see what the town was. Did she say it was life cool after that? No, no. She said oh. like Blackpool. What was the name of the other town? Oh, Bla- oh Liverpool. No, not oh. Liverpool. <laughs> No, no. It could be a black pool. Might it be, might have been yeah. something like that. Uh, you know, I, I don't have the article in front of me. Swimming pool. <laughs> Hello, swimming pool. <laughs> but yeah, she got booed. She said the wrong place. And, you know, I don't have the article in front of me. It's not that important. It's just funny that she got the name wrong. And she kept doing it over and over again. That's the funny part. She didn't get it. You know, just move on. No, nah, she didn't move Can we on. hear it one more time? Um, we can. We can <laughs> hear that in just a moment, uh, Dave. We can hear that in just a moment. So, uh, all right, but we will hear that after the break because we got a break <laughs> coming up here on 11.50 a.m. 101.7 FM WDEL. Uh, hey, coming up at, at, at 2.06. Uh, stay tuned for the news because the news is the best part of this show when I'm here. Uh, stay tuned for the news with the lovely and talented Mr. Chris Carl. It's heading your way. And um, and then I will talk about my personal feelings on John McCain. We'll get into the plaid shirt guy. We'll talk about um, how Gary Johnson might become the first actual libertarian senator. Can you imagine that? He may be an actual elected libertarian senator. That's all coming up real soon. So stay tuned for more of it on WDL. WDEL, Wilmington, Canton, Dover, Delaware's new center. 